All right, so we can cool here with Weapons of Anu. How you doing, man? I'm doing great in yourself. Eh, you know, I can complain, but who the fuck's going to listen? <laughs> Put in boots, right? Exactly. So I just want to say congratulations on the uh, track, Stick Boy. Man. Thank you. Tearing up the uh, the streams there. So you guys got over a quarter of a million, or probably more by now. Yeah, we're really blessed for that. Got to be different, though, you know. I mean, you don't got the fans to actually uh, cheer you on at a live show, so it's got to be a different feeling counting streams instead of fucking hearing claps. Yeah, we're really um, happy with the progress of where we're at streams and, you know, uh, getting new fans where you can't even tour. So, like I said, we're super blessed that we're doing that well. Now, uh, one thing I, I like is that the fact that it's a cover reminds me of the old uh, the Punk vs. Pop albums. Remember that shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how uh, Haley got their big hit, that lollipop shit. Was mad, you know? Kids yep. don't even realize. That song is, you know, uh, like myself being the drummer, when I uh, got offered just to do the first song, I didn't know. I mean, I knew some stuff by the chain smokers, but I didn't know it was a cover, even though I was told. Right. And right. when I played the drums to it, I'm like, yo, this is a really good song. And the producer, Mike, was like, yeah, that's that cover I was telling you. I'm like, oh, I want to hear their stuff, you know, because this, this song's great. And um, when I heard the, their version of how they kind of, Freddie kind of composed. The, the sick boy, I thought it was really tasteful. He still paid, you know, he gave credit where credit's due for the song in its entirety, but he still put the weapons of a new kind of trademark on it. Yeah, man, it's definitely, you guys made it your own track, that's for sure. Yeah. I'm going to be honest, dude, I didn't even think Chainsmokers was like a real band. I thought they were just like DJs. I, you know, same thing, too. I thought it was... Uh, Zach Efron was the singer. I didn't, I, you know, I thought he was like doing that because it kind of looked like him. I didn't know it was like a serious thing. It was just two guys called chain smokers. Well, yeah, man. Like years ago, I, I, I covered them at, uh, they played some college festival and I was doing photos and shit. And it was just two dudes fucking running around the stage. They weren't saying they're just playing records and shit. I was just like, oh, next thing you know, they're blowing the fuck up. So you never know. Yeah. I, I think the sick boy was their, not big big song but they had like 158 million views for that song and i'm like oh that must suck to be like yeah we only got 158 million views for this song we we're falling apart you know it's like yeah, right. so uh did you ever get to play the track for them did they ever hear it or i'm sorry did you ever get to play the track for those dudes did they ever hear your, your cover your version uh Word on the street is I think they heard it and they really liked the version that we did. Because, I mean, like, when you do a cover of a song, you kind of pay homage to that person because they wrote it that way. But for myself, being in previous bands and people covering my stuff on the drums, it's also cool to hear what they would bring to the table. You know, like, and I think they really like the way we did it we still kind of kept the structure but we made it a little heavier yeah for sure you know like i said you guys turned it into your own maybe a cover but it's your own you know what i mean yeah it wasn't uh you guys weren't out there trying to be fucking djs <laughs> around there you made your own shit yeah that's for sure so i see you guys just got a new member is that right yeah how'd you guys uh hook up especially during these uh quarantine times with uh, how did I hook up with them? Yeah, well, you, Kevin. You guys oh, Kevin. Yeah, he's uh, him and I are in another band, and uh, when when I was joining with these guys, um, they were just Ray, Freddie, Reno, and then me, and they had a guitar previous, and I was I just brought it to their attention. I'm like, you know, having another guitar player is kind of the norm today like you don't see many four pieces anymore right right and and with the with the talent that this band has we could pull it off but having another guitar player because freddie is such an amazing guitar player he would have to play a lot of the rhythm stuff or you know play it 
you know, with tracks. And we were like, we don't want to be that kind of band the whole time, you know? Um, so whatever we can do live, obviously looking towards the future for that. Right. Um, we're like, I was like, why don't we get another guitar player? I got the perfect guy. I actually work with him in another band. I know his professionalism. I know how good he is on a guitar. He's a beast on guitar and he's a great person. So bringing him in added a whole nother dynamic to the band because now Freddie can concentrate on leads and counter melodies. And then the audience has another person to look at. Yeah. And they sure. interact with each other guitar playing wise. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, you know, definitely gonna put a little less pressure on, on the singer instead of, you know, especially when it comes to interacting with the crowd. Maybe you can fucking run around or do something while the other dude takes over. Yeah. You know. So I see you guys got an album coming out, but it's got to be hard not knowing when to actually do it because uh, who knows what news is gonna come? What riots gonna start or a different version of COVID to, to push it back a little bit more. Yeah, it's kind of like a, a dartboard and throwing darts at it at this point and going, hopefully April, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, what, what's the process during these times now? I mean, I've noticed a lot more bands have been doing just like a single every couple of months just to keep the fans interested because a lot of bands dropped albums last year that people don't even know that they did because of Corona. They put the whole fucking thing out. They get a little bit of buzz and then the shit falls right off because everyone's worried about where to get toilet paper this week. Yeah, I was saying this in previous interviews I've done in the past. And, you know, it is a singles market today. Um, a lot of people just want to hear that one song. I mean, thank God we have Spotify where you, you don't have to wait on the radio to hear it. You can right. just play it right away and be like, all right, I don't want to listen to the rest of the record. I just want to hear my my song. Um, so putting out Sick Boy and instead of the record in this pandemic, like you got Deftones. Uh, another favorite of mine is Bring Me the Horizon, which they put out an amazing record, which is, they call it, I guess, an EP or whatever. But each band was putting out one song every couple months and then putting out another song. When you put out a full record, all that blood, sweat, and tears you put into it, I, I always make the analogy of your wife cooking for three hours and it takes 10 minutes to eat. Right, right. So you put all this work into a record and once you put it out, that's it. So more teasing the audience of putting one song at a time and seeing how much growth can come out of that one song. Like Sick Boy's been out since October, I think. And, you know, just kind of getting that momentum going. You know, still a lot of people haven't heard this song yet because we can't tour it. Right. So like people like your, yourself and we thank you for the support and other people that are, are, are pr promoting our song on the radio. And I think doing one song and really spending your focus on that one song until it's like, all right, guys, it's kind of wet the bed. Let's put out another song instead of putting a bunch of songs out and it confuses the audience and going, I like this song. I don't like this song. I like this song. I don't like this song. You have one song to like, and then hopefully the next song you'll like even better. Well, you know, it's got to be a learning process of being a musician of trying Absolutely. to figure out what to do. It's Russian roulette. You yeah. know, hopefully it, it works. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, And if it doesn't work, we got to go back to the drawing board. Um, because the world that we live in right now with the rock scene, it's kind of time stands still. And it's a good thing because... With this pandemic, everyone's on the same playing field. No one's touring. Right, yeah, exactly. You know, certain bands are putting out records, but you got Deftones. They could pull out a full record and still sell it because they're the Deftones. Right, right. See, Where you got a new band, you, you put out that record and it doesn't do well because you can't tour it and meet those people and, and connect with them on a different level that now it's out there. Now, what if it doesn't sell? Now you got to go write another record. Yeah, and imagine going back to tour when you got two or three that you put out during this yeah. time off that you had. You know what I mean? What are you gonna play when you get out there? You got fucking three new albums you just rushed out during the pandemic. I mean, we want to put it out. I mean, we're really proud of it. You know, and even before I was in the band when it was already written, and then I put my Chadisms on it, and you know, we're really excited to put it out. 
it's just that kind of patience, probation, you know, in the kind of like holding tank. It's like, when do you want to put it out? Right. And when should be the right time to put it out? Because once everything opens up, it's going to be a smorgasbord of like craziness. Everyone's going to be trying to get on tour. Who's going to get the first dibs? Like I was talking to Freddie about this. Like who's going to get the first arena gigs? It isn't going to be weapons of a new or even my, my old band breaking Ben. It's going to be like Beyonce guns and roses, ACDC right. so the band that would play those kind of arenas. Where do they go? They're probably going to go to clubs. Where do the bands that played the clubs go? to the really bad places, you know, it's like. Well, see, that's the thing though too, man. Like the really bad places probably ain't even gonna be there by the time shit opens up. He's not playing I know, games. I mean, everyone's hurting, even like Live Live Nation. How are you making money when there's nothing happening? Yeah, for sure. So, ticket sales might go up. Uh, people might get scared to just go. Well, I, yeah, at first I think it's going to be a real test of to see who's going to make it and what's going to happen at shows. You know what I mean? I mean, right now, unfortunately, when you see the few bands that are out there do a show every here or there, everyone shits on them for doing it. They're like, "How dare you do it?" But it's like, yeah, we you're, you're get like going on. you're the bad guy for starting, you know, trying to bring positive things to overcome this this disease. But like, I look at it like people were doing the parking lot things, and I thought that might be cool, but then what happens when some guy gets on the stage and goes, let me see your car lights. And like, yeah, right. what, what is moshing going to be? Cars doing demolition derby? Is yeah, that the sure. story? You know, it's like, it's, it's not the same without feeling people sweat, you know, and like crunched up and it's so hot, but you're playing, you're giving it your all and you're feeding off the, the crowd's energy. You're not going to do that in a car. No way, man. Fucking We're nobody. Have that one drunk guy that goes, screw the system, and gets out in the car and destroys it for everyone. And then everyone starts getting out, and then boom, we're in another pandemic. Yeah, it's fucked up, man. A lot of people, you know, like even including you of doing like these podcasts or going to interview bands, you can't. Yeah. So it's like, when is the right time to do this? Because I know our profession is shaking hands being close to our audience we're the worst people to get the you know like we're on the low part of the bottom uh, bottom of the food chain because when you're firing unemployment they're like so when was your last day you worked and how much did you make and can you work today and it's like dude i've been doing this 25 years professionally i mean i can work in a factory but if i screw up my hands yeah for sure Explain that to unemployment that you were in a multi-platinum band and you're trying to funnel unemployment. They laugh at you. Yeah, exactly. See, that's one thing that the, this people don't understand is that like now's the time to really support a musician. If you want that band to succeed, you can't expect music for free anymore. You got to at least fucking buy a song, buy a merch, buy do something because the bands that you love ain't gonna be here a year from now because they weren't able to fucking make money. You got to do something. You know what I mean? I'm all about streaming. I think people deserve music, no doubt about it. But it's kind of a catch-22, even though people gave Lars Ulrich hell about Napster and all that. Look what it did to us. Like, I was saying this in a, a previous interview. YouTube and social media and all that, they're great platforms. But nowadays, when I was younger, I was looking so forward to hearing Alice in Chains Wood on the radio and right. hoping that it would play in like an hour from then. Now you, you're so spoiled, you could play wood until you're blue in the face, right? Or yeah. finding out who the best band is or the best drummer is, you just can go on YouTube. Back in the day, it was talk on the street. Yo, you got to go and see this band tonight. They are sick. Or passing out flyers. And when you pass out a flyer, even though they might have taken it and made an airplane and threw it at you, you were interacting with your audience. They didn't know you, you didn't know them, but by giving them that flyer, you you showed, come and check out my band. And they're like, yo, that guy was really cool. He didn't like force it on me. Now it's like Facebook, you type it in and it's like, I'm coming to your show. And then it's like, dude, we got like 10,000 people showing they're going to come. And then there's like 12. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So 
I think the world is all based on status symbol anymore. It's like likes, views, subscribers. You're a cool dude. Just because you're not with the Kardashians today doesn't make you less popular. Right, right. You know, and that's what I, I hate about society right now. It's like, if you have all these views, you're the coolest thing since sliced bread. Or if you sell this many records, you must be that great of a band. And I think there's so many great musicians and great people you'll never see because they're in their basement and they will never see the light of day. Oh yeah, a hundred percent, man. You know, you know, it's pretty ironic that you're saying all this because your your single sick boy covers all this fucking shit. It, it does. I mean, in the video, it's like how we are so brainwashed by our media of you know, I'm a conspiracist theorist, but you can go down that wormhole and never come back. Right, right, for sure. You know, and it's fun. It's almost like playing a video game in real life, but it's taken away your life. What if? Well, what if it happens? If it happens, it happens. But then you try to get views and likes and stuff, and then you start conspiracy theories, and then that person starts following. You almost become a cult leader. So to have the blessing from the Lord to be able to do what we do, is the way I look at it, is you have a voice. You can do good with it, and you can do bad with it. And you have to be very cautious because someone might run rampant in their brain going, that's what he's saying. I need to do that. You know, and that's it, it is a privilege and a blessing to do what we do. But it is also you can destroy it in five seconds in the wrong way. If you write something political that's on your mind on Facebook, you're taken off now. A hundred percent. Yeah, exactly. I don't think that's fair. We have a freedom of speech. You can like sushi. I can like steak. We still can be friends. You could like Biden. You could like Trump. You could like Obama. You could like Clinton. We still should be friends. So no matter what music I play, no matter what music you play, just appreciate what we're putting out there for you to understand. There, It's a sick world. And we're making people sick. 100% man, I agree with that wow. tenfold. Yeah. Now, one thing I want to talk to you about is when the world opens back up, man, you think when people start going to concerts, everyone used to be holding this fucking phone up the whole time watching the show. You think people are going to step back and actually appreciate the shit they've missed for so long? That is a great question because, you know, you see a lot of musicians big time, I'm not going to say who, that call people out for holding their cell phones out. Now, I got no problem with that, but you are looking through a, a lens when there's a bigger picture and the small lens you're, you're wasting your time looking into when you could be seeing everything around you. You're missing that moment because you're caught up in your phone. I think we all are. I mean, hell, I'm, I'm guilty as charged, right? But if people just close their eyes not even look at a perception of a band anymore because everyone goes for a look oh they got to look cool or they uh, you know close your eyes and just listen to the music and appreciate what that musician has spent years and years of doing you know it's it's like everybody has an opinion like an a-hole but they all stink is, is what we all say right it's right. like someone could go on your podcast and be like Yo, this guy doesn't even sound pro. He's like doing it out of his basement, you know, and, and just says some really heinous stuff to you. Who has the right to say that? I mean, that is a freedom of speech. But again, those words are like razors. You can hurt somebody's feelings in five seconds, even with just one word. It's the intent of how you use that word to cut. So with people holding their cell phones, and you demonizing them basically and saying, and calling them out. So you wanna take this phone and wanna record and not watch my show? They paid money like everyone else. Right. They had the right to use that cell phone. That's their fault if they miss out on the bigger picture. It's like getting drunk at a concert. And I've been there where people went up and be like, yo, my friends they're like yo man i'm sorry bro i missed you drumming with the band i was drunk 
and I was throwing up in the toilet in the bathroom. Well, that's your fault. Right. You right. Know? Just missed out on a great concert. But I'm not going to hate the person. You know, but he paid our, well, he didn't. I got him backstage passes, but, you know, someone that wants to waste their time, let them waste their time. They're, they're just going to miss out. But I would never call someone out for holding a cell phone. All I could say with a loving heart is you're missing out on something by holding a phone up. Not, would not, you want to watch a tornado with your own two eyes and your two ears to listen to it? Or would you want to record it for the Weather Channel? Yeah, right. Or exactly. Special to yourself. Like, not, not even post it. Be like, dude, no one's going to believe this. That, that one thing I, I really hope people just almost reinvent going to shows again. You know, like I said, just enjoy the moment. You haven't had it for so long. You had something stripped from you that was basically just there. You always guaranteed concerts were going to be there. I don't think anyone ever stopped live music when it would end. Yeah, I, I, I feel that I don't care if you're a Fog Hat or a Leonard Skinner tribute band. When when the world opens up, there's going to be people. Right, for sure. You no, know, people want – our music heals the soul, all, all genres, and people are missing that. Watching something stream live is not being in that trench with people, you know – literally crammed into each other it's so hot but you're feeding that you're like you're like wow man this is such a great feeling you can't get that online so what we have to do is think logically and 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 intelligently and say how can we keep engaging with our audience let's just let's embrace social media you can hate it or love it and at this time we have to love it yeah, but I mean, you know, I've watched some of these live streams. You know, it's it's not the same. I mean, it's cool that bands are taking the time to do it, but it's fucking, you know what I mean? Your ears aren't bleeding. You're not drenched in sweat. You know, you're not exhausted from, are your voices shot? Those are the cool experiences. You feel like you're on stage playing. I mean, you know, you go to a concert, whatever's bothering you in the world right now, you, you got two hours of just living in the moment and just getting away from everything. You're watching a show from your computer or your TV screen, you still got your kids and your dogs and shit running around, your phone's going off. I didn't think I mean, I've met plenty of fans that have come up to me and said, I drove s seven hours to come and see you. Right. You can't fathom that as a musician until you put yourself in their shoes and go, wait a minute, I have done that. That's insane. Like you drove seven hours just to come and see us open up for a band or headline a band or, or whatever. The world that makes musicians tick is because of the world. It's not just because of our music. It kind of, it's kind of like back and forth. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. We'll put the music out, but support it. And by, by supporting it is not just streaming it, but buying our record. I mean, I'll be honest. I don't even own a Blu-ray anymore. I just go on Netflix or Hulu or HBO Max. Those are the things that people are like, I don't know how old you are. I'm old. So when I was younger, we had Nintendo. Nothing beat the feeling of <laughs> and putting the cartridge in and praying to God that it would work. Right, right. People yeah. are complaining that they have 12 seconds of loading time going, this is ridiculous. I have to wait this long. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, Dude, you can like save a game in five seconds where I would play 1943 on Nintendo and have to keep it on pause and go to school to play it again because there were no memory cards at that time. Right, for sure. So you, it, it's like almost being a father where your father's like, you don't know how good you have it. Now it's the generation today going, you don't know how good you have. And then the generation to that, you don't know. How, it's like just when does it stop like when do you start looking and go you know what i'm really thankful and blessed that i'm able to play an xbox that the guys don't look like minecraft characters yeah for sure i mean these well i kid got all the new shit man when you look at it it's i mean look at the technology yeah we're talking like we're in the same room right now exactly you know could you imagine doing this years ago over uh a cheesy little flip phone trying to <laughs> converse like this. 
Yeah, well, your, your Zoom thing would be paging me 911. You're, it's time for you to get on the phone call. Yeah, you know, some dial up action right there. Yeah. So, what, what the world opens up and touring starts, what do you do, man? You, what band do you choose to go with? I mean, how does that work? I mean, it, it, it just comes down to the right demographic. I think with this new record, it's going to hit a lot of different avenues. Like, Freddie's a metal guy, but he's not just metal, he can play funk. I mean, in previous interviews that he's done, they used to sound check like Michael Jackson songs and stuff. Right, and right. Like, you think Slayer's just all metal. Dude, they appreciate melody. And I go by that mentality. If it's good, it's good. If it sucks, it sucks. You know, I've done shows with Meshuggah. It's not my cup of tea, but I respect them. You know, I'd rather play with Earth, Wind, and Fire. Right, right. But I still respect every genre. Because if it's good, it's good. And when you see Slayer play, they're good at what they do. Definitely. I mean, I was there for one of the last shows, man. Yeah. They're, they've worked hard to make them sound that way. So you have to give appreciation. I know everybody has an opinion, but you still have to respect, like, prime example, playing in a bar in front of five people, and you play and you sound so good, and people clap like it's like it's a golf game now reverse psychology go to their job and they're working in a factory on a on assembly line and they're like man i'm so tired i'm giving it my all and you're going good job next and they don't get and then they go you what i don't get appreciated and i did all this for your company it's like now imagine how a musician feels when you don't clap and give them the appreciation. Now, it sucks. Let me ask you this. I mean, you are such an experienced musician. Does the guys look at you for tips sometimes? You know, I try not to go, you know, Chad knows all, because I don't. I'm still a student in this game. Um, just because I've been in a band that sold many records and, and blessed for it, I don't try to go, I know all the answers. This is what we need to do because I want to be in a sandbox with people. I want to play with them. I don't want to get kicked out and go to the next sandbox. And Freddie is knowledgeable. He's been in many bands. Reno's been in bands and Ray's been in bands and Kevin's been in bands. So to win a Super Bowl, you got to be a team. And you also have to have an understanding that if I say something to you, I do it out of love and not out of pride. Um, and yeah, could I get carried away and say, well, I sold, you know, this many records with the band I played with. Yeah, I could, but that's like me telling you the sky is blue and you're saying it's purple. I'm not going to spend my time trying to prove that it's blue. Right. If right. they say something that I don't agree, I'm not going to go, you're wrong and I'll prove it. I'll let them say what they want to say or whoever I play with. And then I'll say, in my humble opinion, I think we should do this. Now, that's where the debate comes. We can all debate and be friendly about it. It's when someone has the insecurities and gets angry and mean about it. And or this is what we're going to do. You know, we're going to do this whether you like it or not. Then nobody wants to be with that person. So. When, when Freddie brings up an idea, he has great ideas. When I bring up ideas, they might not be all the greatest ideas, but I still throw it out just to say, what about this? I've done this in the past, and it worked, but it might not work now. See, that's what I get at. I mean, you've seen some shit that, you know, that might. Oh, I've seen a lot. I you mean, know? I played with one of the greatest guitar players, Zach Wilde. He taught me a lot. He taught me how to be a team player. He taught me how to be a brave heart warrior. When you're on that stage, you're out for blood. These people are your friends, but when you're on stage, you got to play the best you've, you got to play like it's your last day to live. Because for instance, if you have ever, never heard weapons of a new, your first impression is either going to be great or they suck. Right, right. So you got to give it your all, no matter if there's 12 people, no matter if there's 40,000 people. 
you got to play like it's your last day to live. And every day I do that. So do you still play with the, uh, with the black star writers too, or no? We're kind of like, uh, n not really right now because, uh, um, Ricky's kind of doing a solo project on his own. Yeah. I just talked to Ricky. Yesterday. Yeah. And so I wish him the best. And, you know, when this opportunity came, I really liked the band. I really liked the guys and I liked the music. So I kind of like went that way. Well, I mean, he just mentioned yesterday that, you know, once time is ready and you guys are able to get together, more music is going to come. I was just making sure you're still part of the band once it actually, yeah. once you're able to. I have to say my priority right now is weapons of a new. So that's got to be cool though. I mean, for you to be in a position where you're that talented, you can go from, from band to band. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, like I say, and, and I don't say it, you know, um, like I'm some Bible thumper, but I am super blessed from God to be able to work in a pandemic, to have a career that I've had. Now it's not been Chad's, a multimillionaire it's been an up and down roller coaster i've said dumb stuff that's haunted me and i've said some great stuff and you know i want to be uh known as a great person not just a great drummer i want to be a person that has motivated people to do the right thing and not the wrong thing so i've been super blessed to be able to have the career that i've had to play with a band like Black Star Riders to play with a band like Black Label and Breaking Benjamin and now Weapons of a New. And I'll continue wherever my path, my doors open and my doors close. You know, he's the guy that tells me when the door opens and when to walk out. Now, when touring starts back up, are you able to use some of the connections that you made in the past to, to help Weapons of a New join like, uh, like bigger tours, things like that? Yeah, like it's going to be a little bit easier for weapons because black star was more of a overseas band. Right. They didn't do much in the States. So we did a lot of overseas touring there. And I, I, I made a lot of fans, a lot of great fans over there now, but this band's, you know, based out of Jersey. So it's going to be, you know, United States and then, overseas you know when we decide to go there but it is nice to be back in the states and tackling that demographic first but it was also cool to be over in europe i got to see europe for a long time you know because and and playing with the band like the black star riders you know they're called thin lizzie <laughs> right that iconic band um but every every band is like for me you get attached to building a house and you, and you look back and go, wow, that was just a ground. And then I framed it. And then you appreciate what you did. Yeah. You got a lot of blisters and a lot of splinters and nails in your fingers, but those scars and that reminds you of how blessed you really are. And you can look at the bad and not look at the good. You have to look at the good in the bad. And so every band that I've done, I've never regretted anything. Right. All I've learned is building my faith and, and, and really pressing on and going, all right, what's next? What can I do to make it better for my situation? And so every band, and I'm saying this, I'm super blessed and appreciated by every band that gave me the opportunity to do what I do. Now, moving forward, what's the next step for, for Weapons of a New? Do you guys have another single in, in line, or what's the plan? Yeah, we're talking about hopefully maybe in February putting out another song. Uh, we already had – we shot three videos in this pandemic in less than one week um, in June. So they've been done for a while. The record's been done, I think, since May, last May. Again, being very strategic on how you want to put all this out. It's like almost like playing chess or checkers. Do you want to put your favorite plays out? Right. Or do you want to get the, the, you know, your opponent some like, man, this guy sucks. And then you clean house. You see what the one benefit of it right now is with being in a band, 
music is the only new thing that's coming out right now. I mean, there ain't no TV shows, there ain't no movies. Yeah, really movies, else. right? Yeah, I think when you're hungry, I, I use this analogy like a cigarette. When I used to smoke cigarettes instead of vaping. When you're dying for a nicotine hit, you will smoke your last cigarette butt and not even go to the store because you're that lazy. You're like, I just need a nicotine hit. And you'll grab your last cigarette butt and smoke it, even though it tastes nasty. You need that hit because you're hungry for it. Right. If you're hungry for music, you will find what outlet to do, whether it's going back in the studio, whether writing for other bands writing for yourself, um, exploring another instrument, getting into producing, or actually trying to find outlets to get through this pandemic and, and letting the world hear our music. So I think that's where we're at right now. It's like, there's so many hungry musicians going, we can't tour, but we're not making income. And it's not like every band plays for money, but let's call it how it is. That's how we survive. Yeah, for sure. So every time someone streams, they don't realize we don't make that much money off of streaming. You have to be in the billions to start seeing numbers. I think it's like 1,500 streams is one record. One CD. Right, right. So do the math of that. One CD is nothing. So... Every time you're streaming and not buying a actual record, like to me, having something in your hand to look at and to have the control over is great. But that comes down to, oh, my CD scratched or my t old school tape got all warped up from the heat. You don't have to worry about that now. You just hit play, pick your playlist, and there you go. But again, if you keep doing that, you might not be hearing the songs that you love and appreciate. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, you know, I mean, going through and put, you, you hear one song, you get a CD and you go through, you never knew the tracks that could be on there. You know what I mean? It's gold that can be found in some of these records. I mean, let's, let's call it how it is. Anybody can do a podcast. Right. But there's something special that you have, like a slogan or something like that in your podcast. But someone has a little more money and steals your idea and then kind of catfished you, but becomes more successful. Mm -hmm. How would you feel? Oh, yeah. I, yeah, exactly. So that's kind of what we feel as musicians. It's like we put out this music and then people can steal it. They, they don't embrace it and appreciate it per se of like, wow, like I'm taking – a stream away from them helping them but they're not making much money so they're not going to be able to afford to do another record so when you put money into something that you believe you're helping contribute to the company to put out more music for you to appreciate we're not stealing from bands we take stuff from bands but we also pay homage for instance sick boy we don't get paid for that. It's a cover. Right. We're helping the chain smoke. Not that they need help by any means, but you get what I'm saying? We're promoting them on a different demographic of rock. Where maybe people that like Slipknot don't know the chain smokers. But if they like our version of Sick Boy, they might, yo, I'm gonna go check where they got this from. They're actually not that bad. So we're helping each other than hurting each other. So I think when people do that kind of stuff, you're going to see a lot of bands go away because of this pandemic. And it's sad that there are so many great bands, but they don't have the funds. Right. Label can't support it. Why? Because the label's falling apart too. You see, that's one thing I brought up in other interviews myself is that like during this pandemic, if your bands aren't making money, as a musician, whatever you are, you're still a person. You got to figure out a way to get cash. So that means going out and get a nine to five during this time because you have no idea when you can do it. And what happens if you're like an up and comer or, or a mid level band and you realize doing whatever the fuck you're doing makes more money or just equivalent to actually being out and pumping it out on the road and stuff? I mean, do you continue 
to go back into the re- be happy and content. I, you know, where people's like, oh, you sold out. Well, who has the right to say that? They don't know the story of our lives. Like, for instance, I was in a multi-platinum band selling out arenas. Right. It was great. Then I went back and played in cover bands. I left Breaking Ben. I left that whole life that was right there in front of me. And I just put it in the past. I loved it, but I needed to go somewhere else. So that's what I chose. And by that, cho- that choice that I made, it was sacrificing. It was, it was hard, a hard battle. I mean, playing in cover bands after playing in front of 40,000 people, you know, but I love it so much that I wouldn't let it take me down. And if you love so much, so that's why I use the cigarette thing. If you love it and you hunger for it, no matter what people are doing, streaming it or not, you're still going to put out content and you're going to still press on no matter what this pandemic does to bands. If you love it that much, that's a true artist. I'm not playing for the money. I play it because I love it. Right. I love seeing the interaction with my audience, our fans and watching them go, you know, I just quit my job to come and see you guys today. I probably am going to get fired. Well, guess what? It doesn't hurt me. It hurts him. Right. But if you, Go in his shoes and know that you don't have a job because he came to support you. Man, that speaks volumes of a fan, you know, for sure. So, uh, again, with with the streaming, if they buy a shirt or buy a ticket, they're still contributing where they can stream. But they're still putting money in our pockets to be able for that stream to be free. And not us to go, dude, why are you doing that? Yeah, because, I mean, really, dude, Netflix is the same thing, right? You pay monthly a membership and you watch all the free movies you want. Right, right. You're not spending nine to twelve dollars to go see that movie every time you watch a Netflix show. Remember that. Well, I mean, so, a perfect analogy with that is now with HBO Max, the movies that are in the theaters the same day is on that streaming service. I have it. I watched it. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know, and so I really can't yell at somebody if I'm doing it. Right. It's different, though. It's different because it's movies. It's the same thing. Right. You know, like when I first saw Return of the Jedi, there was this whole thing campaign like Taco Bell and doing like winter glasses and all that stuff. Like you could get Darth Vader glass and all those cool things. That stuff's gone. Because Netflix promotes it. Yeah. What is Taco Bell going to promote Netflix? No. <laughs> so that whole movie thing has gone. Like going to see Jaws or Freddy Krueger or anything like that. Those things are gone. All those cool like presents that we felt special with are gone. Oh, yeah. You know? And that's why I think a lot of the creativity of music is gone. Because of Pro Tools and Logic and all that. I mean, if we make a mistake, we can edit it. But how is that going to correct our mindset and speak, think before we speak, not speak before we think? So now, because we know we can edit it, everything has to be scripted. Everything has to be more pro. We have to be on our P's and Q's kind of thing. Like, oh, can you can you edit that? Nope. Okay, bro, I, I can't let you put that out. I'm going to look like an idiot. Right, right. You know, same thing with drumming. If I mess up a verse, I can just punch it in. But how's that making me a better drummer? Exactly. So sometimes, again, technology can hurt us and it can help us. So, you know, where I look at bands today, they're not the same as it was back in the day. Like Guns N' Roses, Van Halen, Zeppelin. Compared to what's out today. Right. Yeah. You can't, you know, when these people pass, they're called icons for a reason because you can't duplicate it. See, I, I question that all the time. I mean, I bring this up a lot. It's just out of the bands that are up and coming right now, who do you think is going to be the next Ozzy, the next Axel? You know what I mean? I, I couldn't pick. There could be. 
There could be another Pearl Jam. There could be another Nirvana. There could be another Slayer. I'm not saying there couldn't be, but nine times out of 10, it might never happen. I mean, nowadays, like I was talking to Zach about this, name even on your hand, five bands that you can name every player. Right, yeah. I mean, especially with the, the way people filter through members these days, you know what I mean? I mean, you might look out and say number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, but like back in the day, you could say, Guns N' Roses, Axel, Duff, Slash, Izzy, Steve. Right, right. That was the cool thing. Tom Mariah, Kerry King, Paul Bostaff, or Dave Lombardo. You know, like, you can't do that anymore. No, I mean, shit. Look at look at Foreigner. There's not one original member left in that band, and they're still going strong. Every member of Breaking Ben. Yeah, well, I mean, Ben. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's because he's a singer. Right. But if he wasn't a singer, you wouldn't say Ben. No, I mean, you know, that's the sad thing. People aren't interacting with everybody anymore in a band. Like finding that Rush, Alex Lifeson. Getty Lee, Neil Peart, God rest in peace. But that's only three people. Right, right. You get five, six, seven, our brain goes, wait a minute. I just know the lead singer because he's up in the front. That's it, man. You know, I mean, a lot of people. What about the bass player? The one that holds the fork down. The one, if, 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 if his stuff goes down, you go, where's the low end? Right. I don't know who it is, but something's missing. For sure, for sure. He's, everybody's important. I mean, let's look at football. If you're not into football, you know the quarterback, the running back, and maybe a receiver. Right. Because they do all the exciting stuff. But really, in the grand scheme of things, it's the guys on the offensive line that are protecting the quarterback. For sure. It's like people like you, you know, having podcasts having an outlet for us to be able to, to talk about the band and promote the band. But you don't get mentioned. Right, right. Radio stations get mentioned. Yeah. I mean, You're as important as anybody else out there. Whether you have views, whether you have subscribers, everyone deserves a shot. And if if that was the case and they go, well, he doesn't play in this band, so I don't want him in in it because he doesn't have a name. Motion to then you. where were you when you got your first job? Someone took a like a chance and said, he's nobody big, but he can play. Let's give him a shot. So it's like monkey see, monkey dumb. Don't follow that tradition. Break it. Right. Definitely. Hey, publishing. You know why I hate publishing? Because it's saying, you wrote the lyrics, you wrote the melody, everyone else, nothing. But I'm in the trenches with you. I wasn't maybe there, not saying uh, weapons of a new or anything I've done, but I'm just saying in general, that's what breaks up a lot of bands because it's usually the lead singer and a guitar player that make the most money, right? So why do I want to be in something like that where they're making the money and I'm can't even I have to go back and work in a factory. See that that's one thing I, I didn't I didn't know. I've never asked a band that it's not equal like between everybody. It's it, 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 it all depends. You know um like let's let's say I play for Justin Bieber. Right, right. I didn't write the songs. I'm just a higher gun. To, to go and do his house. And if I have another opportunity, I'm going to go do another house. That's a higher gun. A member is in it. But when you're a member, but you didn't write the song per se, but you wrote the drums while they were in the same room, but you didn't write the lyrics or the melody, they don't have to cut you into any of it. And that's what I, I was always curious about that. I mean, I'm sure there's, you know, there's like, you know, Danzig or somebody like that, you know, Danzig going to take the lion's share, you know, just throwing a name out there, you know, I mean, yeah. but I figured in, in maybe 
Metallica. You know what I'm saying? Lars is probably getting just as much as James. I'm I'm assuming. Prime prime example. Let's look at in, in in your profession. I'm the one that gives you all the 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 knowledge to say what you say on your podcast. It starts to blow up. I want everything because I gave you the words. Right, right. And you're like, but I sell it, bro. Like, yeah, you might have wrote this, but I also contributed it with my personality on that mic. Right. I'm not playing just an ACDC beat. I'm actually com like composing an idea in my head, melodies. You might not hear it in drums because you're not a drummer, but I am contributing. What if I play a drum beat and then you play a riff? I don't get anything because it's just a drum beat. That's what I hate about the music business. It's like, I'm going to frame the house, but you're going to get all the glory because you put the furniture in. Right. Yeah, man. That's a you're like, Yo, bro, you wouldn't have furniture if the house would have fallen. For sure. I built you a foundation that you can build off of. So to me, again, it goes to a team. Even the bass player. Even the bass player goes, do, 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 do. He's still contributing, whether it's two notes or one note. Right. And the guitar player plays off of that. Keep doing that. Chad, just keep a beat. And then I start playing a beat, but then I take the beat somewhere different, and then the riff plays off that beat. We all wrote. But it gets to get greedy and scared. I blame the labels and, and the industry to make us monsters after each other. Because now we're like, we're not selling records, but I'm still getting a publishing check because I wrote this riff. Where I think it went wrong is where lazy people weren't doing anything, and then two people were writing, and when the songs came up on the radio, they had to pay their band members because they signed a contract. And they're like, wait a minute, these guys are going to strip clubs, and we don't get to party or anything, we're sitting in the studio writing these songs, and they get fair share? That's not fair, that's when it changed. Right. So I've always wanted to change that. And with my other band, with Kevin, I don't care if you've been in the band for a day. You're a member and you get equal publishing because now it's an incentive. Everyone's going to contribute and do it all together. No one's going to sound like, here's my riff. I'm going to sing it with my mouth. And they go, I don't like that riff. That makes no sense. Do you not like that riff? Now you start messing up your mind, letting that take over and go, do you not like that riff? Because you know it is a good riff, but you won't give me publishing. Now you see how it starts to go like this. Yeah, man. Like a pendulum. Like who's your friend and who's out for money? I didn't write drum beats to make money. I wrote drum beats because I was blessed to make. So when I played Maria Jane, Ben didn't tell me what to play. I heard his riff. I started playing. But I don't get anything. I don't tell people that. But it's about time that I finally stick up for myself. I was a higher gun. And so as the years go by, I have to look at my life and go, I'm a slave. I'm just a monkey that hits cymbals. And I want to change that for drummers. I want to change that for people that feel like they contributed something. Like, what if you're in the room and you're like, bro, why don't you change this word to this word? You did something. So if we're all in the same room writing a song with the intent to write a song, we should all be equal. See, this was totally eye-opening for me here, man. I mean, like, I I always wondered why somebody even like like yourself, where you're you're in a huge band, you're playing arenas, you're doing stuff, just to why you would walk away from everything. I mean, from what you said, just fucking totally just explained it. 
there's always two sides of every story, you know, um, and, and that's when you find out who your friends and who your enemies are. I forgive and I forget it, but I grew from it, but I don't want it to be just business. Unfortunately, it's all business. I always say 30% talent, 70% business. And the sad thing is, you know, when you're as equally as talented as everyone else, and then jealousy kicks in, right? you're just a drummer. You just hit things for a living. Well, do I? Or do you not understand the way I play? Because it's like taking Danny out of Tool. Danny's is a big part of Tool. Right. So is Maynard. So is Adam. You see what I'm saying? We're all equally talented. So why are we trying to screw each other over if we want to win the Super Bowl? Have a quarterback, a running back, and a receiver fight with each other on that play. See if the next play is going to win them the Super Bowl. Are they willing to sabotage their friendship and sabotage their Super Bowl championship because they're mad at each other? But people do that. Oh, why did he give it to the running back? I was wide open. Well, that wasn't the play. But then you also got to be appreciative that you have a job. There's an upside on that too, where I can't be like, well, I want publishing and, and this and that, because then people will like hit the road. So you have to be very cautious and respectful for others. You know, I don't expect anything from like weapons because I wasn't there to write the songs. I did write my drum parts and I perform my drum parts, but I did not create those songs. Now you could have some guy go, I want publishing and I want this and that. That's not fair. So you got to know when to pick your battles and also stand up for yourself, you know, but you also have to be respectful to others and appreciate others and understand they're not screwing me over. I might've had bad past, you know, of things happening, but I can't blame them. But you see, one thing I'm realizing when I'm speaking to you is you're, you're talented and you're smart. So that's definitely going to make you dangerous in the music industry. You know what I mean? I mean, when you walk away from something like Breaking, breaking Benjamin over the, the, the shit you just told me, does it get you worried in the long run that you're going to be labeled as a, as a troublemaker only because you're smart enough to open your mouth and say, listen, this ain't fucking fair, man. This ain't the way shit should be. I mean, after I left... Breaking Ben, it did hurt me for a while. There were a lot of rumors on the street that I was not a good person to work with or other bands that I've let, let, I was let go or I quit or this or that. Again, people don't know that full story. Right. They hear what the press wants to put out or this or that, or I left because of creative differences. I try to do everything as professional as possible. I get so attached to people. I give them my heart, my soul, because I want to be a team player. I want to take over the world with our music. But some other people might get jealous over that. Oh, well, what, why is Chad getting mentioned and I'm not? I don't show off, I do it because I'm blessed. And I want to show off my blessing. If you're good at what you do, celebrate it. Don't hide it, celebrate it, but don't be cocky. Don't get arrogant, but be confident that you can do it. So being in a band is being with four married women. Right, right. You know, it's like, oh boy, it's their time of the month. We guys do get that. I do. You know, and so you're living on a bus with people. Now, mind you, you're not making as much as that person. And you're doing as much work live. That's the, that's the point of being a higher gun or being a member. It's like, wait a minute, I'm doing all the autograph signings while the other people are on the bus and I'm saying that they can't because they're sick and I'm making them look good. But in the long run, I'm the one that's making them look good. It's not fair, but you also have to look at, at both, both sides of the coin is you at least have a job. So be happy where you're at. Right, right.
So it's a catch 22. You're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. You know, it's like you can complain until you're blue in the face or just be content with what you have. And my job is I love drumming. So I try to enjoy everything that I have. And my new band is great. They're great to me. Black Star Riders was great to me. Breaking Ben was great. You know, um, Zach was great. But there's also things that aren't always great. And I'm not going to make it sound like a white pinked fence and a perfect family and my dog, you know, and a perfect sunrise. No, it isn't. I don't sugarcoat anything because that's not life. Life is tribulation, a bumpy, turbulent air, you know, air flight. And some days you might have a great time in the air when you're getting to your destination. And sometimes it might be bumpy and be like, uh, strap in because it's going to be a bumpy road. But that's what I love. And again, I pray on it every day to get me through it. That's, you know, again, I, I'm not trying to sound like, you know, some super f fanatic of Christianity, but that's my faith. And my faith has got me through so much away from drugs, away from that rock star lifestyle. I stay focused and stay grounded. And that's what pressed me on through the up and down turbulence. It really did. I mean, it really did. You know, speaking with you, you could almost start a, a school coming position to let them know what to expect you know yeah i mean when i do drum clinics i don't go woe is me i, I hate being put on a pedestal well, again only pedestal i put is god i'm a, a, a servant i'm i'm there to preach the word through my drumming through my hands i don't like to be praised as an idol i'm not right but i want to do be respected so when i do drum clinics I don't try to wow people with my awesome licks and stuff. I talk about business, stuff that needs people for people to understand. That Phil you just saw me do will get you fired. It will intimidate people. Keep it in the tool shed. You might need a sledgehammer for a project, but you're not going to need it for this one. But just keep it in case so you don't have to go to Lowe's and buy another one. You dig? So it's like you always just got to stay sharp. Practice, practice, practice. Don't ever think you're good. Strive. You always can get better at something, you know? And so to me, I don't know all the answers. People ask me, how do you get signed? <laughs> when you find out, let me know. <laughs> I'm still trying to find that formula. But for, again, from the grace of God, man, this band is super blessed to be where we are, to have Freddie in our corner, to be able to help this band and to grow this band. But again, you have to look at it as I came into a band that was already established, like Breaking Ben. Right. So I can't be like, well, I'm the greatest drummer of all time. I expect all this. I don't. I'll work for it, but also appreciate that I'm willing to make that step and do whatever it takes to make this band go to the next level as much as I can do with my love and, and passion and drumming. Just appreciate it. That's all I'm saying. Now, the people that want to follow up, they want to know more about the band. They want to download. They want to see the video. Where do they go? What do they do for everything? All our social media, Twitter, all that, just weapons of a new. But a new is A and E. EW, one word. Instagram, Spotify. Um, please support Sick Boy and, you know, singles to come. And, and hopefully we can all get through this pandemic and see face to face and eye to eye and be able to, to interact with everybody. Awesome, man. It was a great talking to you. you yeah, man. Thank you so much for the support and taking your time out. Open up my eyes on a lot of things today, man. I really appreciate you being but so they're good things. Yeah. Not shun sure. upon anybody, say they're worse or any band I've ever played with because I, I don't wish any ill will. It was just young and dumb learning experiences from including myself and just picking up those pieces and moving on. I mean, I know the the Trump and Biden thing 
is like a, a sore tooth, but we can still all get along. Even Trump was hated. He's still our president. We had to respect him. We have an opinion, but imagine if that was on your family for four years. Right, right. Every day talked about. People would hang themselves, shoot themselves, because you read it all the time on Facebook. My son committed suicide because people harassed him at school. Imagine that four years and you're the most powerful person in the United States. Yeah. So even if I don't like Biden, I have to respect him as our president. And we have to respect everybody. I mean, we, uh, we all like to joke, put memes up and say that. But you got to know that on the other side, someone's hurting from that. It's like saying I look like a, a cracked out Tom Hanks from Castaway. Yeah, that's funny. I can say that about myself. But to some other people, they might bleed differently. And it could really completely destroy them mentally and physically. So we just got to encourage everybody. And if you don't like Sick Boy, you have a right to say that. Or we didn't cover it and we didn't do justice. You have the right to say it, but just appreciate what we did. Definitely. Definitely. You know? Appreciate what your podcast is. You can have an opinion. Oh, Chad's an idiot. You should never have him on. You, They can say that. But try to do it in a smart manner. Think before you speak. And I am a, I should practice what I preach. Definitely, man. I mean, so we got to encourage. Encourage, encourage, encourage. Because, dude, you could be the next person running Sirius XM, Octane, whatever. But who knows if someone degrades you? And says, well, dude, you're doing your stuff in your bedroom or your basement or your garage. What if you could have been the next guy, but you let that person knock you down? Yeah, I, I agree with that 100%. I mean, when I first started this business 10 years ago, there's been so many bands that were the opener or something like that that I didn't take the time out to appreciate or talk to. And some of them guys are the biggest thing in the world right now. I mean, these are dudes that I, I, I'd sit as close as me in this water bottle right here and just look over and say, hey, how you doing? When he could have thought in hindsight, like, damn, why didn't I say, hey, let me know about you. When you are you figure you're there to do a job, you do the one thing that you're supposed to do, you don't take the time out to appreciate what's next to you and what can come of that. Quick story. I had a friend who was filling in a gig for me. He has tattoos all the way up to his neck, okay? We all get judged. I've done it to many people myself. Oh, they're bad people, right? And long story short, he went into this restaurant after sound check and had lunch. He went into that same place at dinner time and they kicked him out. Okay. He called me. I saw a post and I'm like, yo, bro, don't sweat the small shit. There's ugly people out there. Just don't go there. I sent him a picture of a doctor. And then it was another picture of the doctor fully tattooed and right. said, this guy might have saved your life. You don't know what these people are. I have a lot of biker friends. They think some people think they're the worst people on earth. They're the ones that deliver teddy bears to children's hospitals. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, everybody is something to me until they mess up. Right. That's, that's a good way to approach things for sure. I mean, I wish more people did these days. You know, I mean, I do have a habit of sometimes making fun of bands and stuff like that. But someone put me in my tracks and said, but there is someone out there that does like that band. And when you say that, you hurt their feelings because they like that band. So you always got to be on your P's and Q's because especially in my career, like you say one dumb thing on Facebook, it will haunt your career. And it won't just haunt you. It will haunt your band that you work for. Right. I mean, yeah, look, look at Chris Brown, you know. His prime example. I know those guys. I know Chris. 
And posting that stuff isn't just hurting him, it's hurting his whole band. So, I mean, I, I've talked to Chris several times. And he's Chris, a great guy. Yeah, awesome guy. I mean, his conversation we had is amazing. The shit we talk about is great. Yeah, he has an idea and a belief. And unfortunately, we're living in a society that if you don't believe what you what they do, you're a fucking asshole. What sucks. I believe in God. This person might not. But I'm not going to bash him publicly on the views that he believes in or I believe in. I have to love my enemy or love my neighbor like I would love myself. And that why that golden rule is food for thought that everyone should follow. Love yourself like I love your neighbor like you would love yourself. But sometimes you don't love yourself, so sometimes that might not work out. But you, you, we have to look at 2021 a different optical lens and say, what did we do wrong in 2020? There was a lot of crazy movements. A lot. Yes. And I, I agree to a certain degree of protesting, but I don't accept violence to get your voice heard. There's protests. If, that was, if that, that was the case, bro, I would have been Michael Douglas falling down by now. Yeah, exactly. 100%. Yeah, I mean, you like, would, I mean there's protesting and uh, there's like, you know, burning down buildings and smashing out windows. I mean, not, and your voice will never be heard. It will be actually door closed exactly. because violence doesn't make anything go away. It just puts more fuel on the fire. Because mm -hmm. then you got another pair of, of opinions going, what gives them the right to do this? And then they did this. And then that party says, what about me? It's just monkey see, monkey dump. You know, hopefully uh, everyone's eyes open up this year and it doesn't implode on us. And hopefully the music does that. Hopefully, I, I I really pray that people are really gonna embrace music differently and appreciate it. Because once something goes away, man, you go, man, I don't, I can't believe how good I had it until I abused it. You know, like we said earlier in the conversation, I it, once touring starts back up, and hopefully people appreciate what they had taken away from them. Something that you thought would never ever disappear almost a year now it's almost been think how crazy that is it's only been one full year since uh flooring actually happened what if we all go off the grid and no one can hear you talk and be like ah you know i'll just go listen but they liked your podcast some people didn't some people hated it but what if you were the only one that could be on the air and no one else right right you know th those are the things that i think i've grown in the spirit and and, and myself of just being appreciated for everything that you have. Mind the COVID, you're alive. Some people are not. Right. And some people didn't even drink or do drugs and just got hit with this virus and lost half of their family. That's tragic. So you look at it and you're like, okay, maybe it ain't that bad. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's the one thing that's keeping my household together was right now is, you know, we got each other, we got our health. I mean, shit may be crazy out there. Over your head, whether it's a mansion, that's all hearsay, bro. That's like all status symbol. It doesn't make you who you are. You're still a rock star in my eyes. You have a podcast. You might not be as big as, you know, slim pickings, but you're, you have a goal. You're doing something. You're talking to a band like us. And you've achieved something. You're a rock star. That's what a rock star is. Something that achieves a goal. Not a person that gets bowed down to and, oh, my God, they're the best thing since sliced bread. No, dude. We just do something different in a different profession than a, a person that works in an ambulance. That's it. Exactly. exactly. And we're good at what we do. We take pride in what we do. We worked hard for what we do. But no one knows that backstory. People li living in their cars or up and down roller coasters. They just hear that song. But that song speaks to amounts of people all over the world. It's so true, man. 100% on that. Yeah. But it's been a pleasure talking to you. Uh, everything you. fantastic from, from start to finish. 
Uh, the single right now is Sick Boy, and you can go to Weapons of a New, just look them up, and uh, you'll get everything. you get Spotify, you'll get updates, hopefully uh, another single next month. We'll yeah, we like, we like to post a lot of new content on our Instagram. Like, I do drum videos. Um, our bro Kevin's doing it, too. He's doing stories. And we also have a fan page where if you sign up to that, you'll get exclusive stuff. So. Perfect, man. Great. Thank you so much. Hopefully, you, uh, next time we get to talk again, it'll be. Hopefully, we'll see each other in 2021 face to face. That's what I'm saying, man, for sure. All right, buddy. Take care of yourself. Thank you so much. And hey, congratulations on success. And I'm glad to see that you kept pushing along through, through everything that was thrown at you. Thank you so much.